Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and in this video we're going to be trying to find out what is wrong with this hairdryer here, this Glitter Babes hairdryer, this very fetching glittery pink hairdryer. Now, I went to turn this on today and it wasn't working and then my wife said, oh yeah, last night well, I was drying Ben's hair and it stopped working when, uh, when we turned it off and back on again. So I thought, okay, I'll do a video on it and I tested it, definitely wasn't working. Now I plugged it in and it is working. But my daughter also says that it's really weird. It could work and then it will just stop working. And it will work, you turn it off and then you go to use it again and it will stop working. And this has happened before to my wife as well so she thought it might be to do with overheating. The thing is, is that this morning it had been off all overnight and it still wasn't working. So what I'm gonna do now is, I don't wanna find a fault when it's already here, but it definitely is a faulty. I'm gonna uh, just fast forward through it or I'm just gonna cut the video. I'm gonna keep turning it on. I'm gonna let it build up some heat and then turn it off. And then when it's not working, it's gonna be much easier to fault find. I don't think it could be anything like the fuse in the plug because why would that, that should either work or not work. It shouldn't be intermittent like that. Could be a break in the cable, but again, it's unlikely. But what I'll do is I'll keep wiggling it around the place and see whether wiggling it makes it work or stop working. I think it's gonna be something to do with the, you know, the mechanism in here which turns itself off when it gets too hot. I'm wondering whether that thing is not resetting itself. I don't even know how that works, but uh, I'm wondering if, if it's something to do with that. Now, it doesn't look like there's any filters or anything here to clean out. Uh, yeah, but let's turn it on. I'm hoping it will become faulty for me, and then let's take it apart. It might be an interesting one. Success. Right, it was on for about two minutes and then it turned itself off. Now, I wasn't covering up this part and I wasn't covering up this part. So two minutes is not very long to dry your hair. And now you can see it's gone off. It does feel very warm here. I don't know whether that's normal or not, but that's good. So now it's not working. So uh, let's unplug it, take it apart and then see if we can get some measurements on anything. See, uh, I can see that there's like some massive kind of diode -y thing in there. Can you see it just up here? So maybe that thing's failing once too much heat goes on it. Maybe that's what the cutoff thing is, I don't know. It's definitely not working now. Right, let's uh, unplug it and take it apart. Now obviously, I'm dealing with 240 volts going into this, so the whole time I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that it is unplugged because if I leave this plugged in, then uh, I could end up electrocuting myself. Now if you have a look at these ones here, can you see that they're slightly different? They're like security bits. And I'm pretty sure that I did buy a pack years ago, and I think one of them might be in it. There you go, so I think it's this one here that I need. No, there's two, uh, the gap's too big there. There we go, that's better. So I needed the smaller one there. Like that. Right, this has popped out, I don't really know what that's for. Do you know what, maybe that was for some sort of different model. That just looks like a blanking plug there, doesn't it? Well, okay, let's uh, keep all this to one side. Straight away I can see quite a few hairs trapped around there, which I suppose could cause a little bit of uh, friction to the motor, but it's not, it doesn't, it still looks like it's spinning around freely enough. So what do we have here? So we've got the cable going in, 
and then it looks like it goes across the resistor into this thing here, whatever that is and then the wires travel up, I'm not really sure where they go to I'll have to take it apart further to find out Right, okay, so we have, this is just kind of some sort of, that must be just to keep the heat in. So let's not worry about any of that. This is everything right here. Now let's make sure there's nothing in here that's going to give me a shock. That definitely looks like, that definitely looks like a diode there. In fact, there's a few components in there, isn't there? Let me zoom in because uh, you lot will recognise what these are. Right, so we've got the live and the neutral here. There's a resistor going across there. And we've got this thing here, which I'm not sure what this actually is. Point 0.1 UF, 275 volts AC. Would this be some sort of capacitor or something? Don't know what that is. We have a switch here, so basically the live turns into a red, goes onto there, which is bridged across there. So all of these middle ones are now live. And then we have a blue and a white coming off that. All for two different speeds, isn't it? Right, so we've got two different speeds coming off here, the blue and the white. And the, uh, the neutral goes onto the, another red wire, but more well an orange wire, which goes onto that part of the coil. What's the difference between the blue and the white? The white goes up to here, which goes to that diode, and the blue goes to here, which goes to this diode again. How does that make it a different speed? What am I missing here? Uh, blue goes to there. Well, I suppose the difference is, is that blue goes to this side of the diode and the white goes to this side of the diode. So, hold on, a diode will let it through one way and not the other way. Uh, so maybe the white one, then, if it's going through the diode, would that pr provide less, uh, less power into it? Hold on. I don't know which side is the white now and which side is the, you know, when I was in the switch here, I can't remember which way it goes round. Right, okay, let's get the meter out and let's see if we have continuity. See, really, I need to plug this in now to see if it's working right now. That's going to be a bit on, bit on the dangerous side. So let's zoom out a bit and let's just test for continuity and see what we have. So now, have we got continuity across here? Here and here. We have. We have, yes. So, if we were to turn that on, do we have continuity across this coil? So the coil starts here and ends here. Yes, we have. So I bet you right now it would be working. You know what, I'm just going to quickly plug it back in just to, just to see. It's well clear of it. I'm just going to put it on low speed to begin with. I'm just going to plug it in now and see if it does anything. Yeah. So this is going to be hard. It must be that thing that's over. It must be that thing that's overheating. So let's just leave it like this. Plug it in. Again, I'm just going to fast forward through it. Then when it cuts out, we'll take it apart and we'll quickly check that thing. You know that thing that I said must cut out when it overheats. Maybe that is getting too sensitive. Right, guess what? It's 
that's working absolutely fine now. So by now it, it's uh, it cut off way before that. I'm wondering, I've just unplugged it again. I'm wondering, could it have been something to do with the trapped hair? Maybe those bits of hair were going near to that uh, thing that cuts off when it gets too hot. Maybe it was the hair burning or something. I don't know. Or maybe the hair getting trapped slightly in the motor, causing causing a bit more friction, make, making it... Ah, oh, could it have been the hair arcing between the uh, the coils or something? I don't know. Right, what I'm going to do is I am going to take it apart again. I'm going to clean it all and then put it back together and leave it on for a good 10 minutes and see if that fixes it. Basically, I don't want to spend ages on something which is uh, working. It might because this hasn't got a filter because this is just a, a cheap hair dryer. I think it came in some sort of like, a, you know, kits for young kids. Uh, it's really hot now. Uh, I'm wondering because there's no filter whether that means it's more likely to fail if hair and stuff gets caught in here. Nice if I could take this off, but it all seems to be kind of moulded together. Maybe I could lever it off, but I might risk and I might break it because I could imagine these fins would break pretty easy. She said there's quite a bit of hair caught in the spindle there. I really would like to take that fan out to give it a proper clean. I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure here, see if it's going to move at all. No, that's not going to come off. Like most of the hair, there wasn't, well, there's a kind of like, uh, there's a certain amount there, but there's not a huge amount of it. It's, uh, the, the, the motor was definitely spinning. This is the only thing I can think. I mean, I might put it back together. It might stop working after, uh, after a minute. I just want to double check this thing here because I've got a, a theory, which it might be. Right, okay, so this heat thing here, I think what happens is, as this heats up, could be completely wrong, but is it one of those metals where one side's like copper, one side's something else, and as it heats up, one side of the metal shrinks more than the other, so it causes it to flip up. Is it called a bimetallic strip or something like that? Uh, so let's just say now if this top bit here is made of a metal which contracts more than the metal on the other side. When it gets to a certain temperature, it will contract and it will cause this to flip up, which will break the circuit between here and here. So if you have a listen right now, the circuit is working. So have a listen there, okay? But now watch, as I lift this bit up here, there, it breaks, yeah? There. So in theory, would it be possible that a hair had got in between those contacts and then was causing it to basically uh, just not make the contact. That's all, I'm, uh, that's all I'm thinking of. I know that's unlikely and I think it's more likely that there's a component in there that's failing. It's just that right now it's working all right. So I'm gonna put this back together. I have actually got another hair dryer that only works on one speed. So basically it's got, sorry, not speed, one heat setting. So it's got two speed settings how fast the motor spins, that works. The cool setting works, the first setting uh, heat setting works, but the second heat setting doesn't work, so it should have three settings, cool, uh, first heat, and second heat. It doesn't matter whether you're on one or two, it makes no difference. So maybe, let's open that one up, and that might be more interesting, because I'm not 100% sure that there's actually anything wrong with this one. So I'm gonna uh, put it back together. And if it fails again, it's not a problem because then I'll have more info on it and I can, uh, I can just do it again in another video. Right, it's all back together now. So I'm just going to leave that on for a few minutes and then we'll try and fix this one here. Now this has already been a part by me many, many, many years ago. Can't remember what the problem was with it, if I'm honest with you, but I remember that I had to put a normal, like, 
crosshead screw in there and also I think a few things broke so I had to kind of gaffer tape it up but we've had this for years and it worked for years before it broke and now it's been working for years since it was fixed again can't remember what the problem was but it's just now not giving off enough heat so for example now yes it will give off both levels of the fan but it will only give off one level here so this one here this one here sorry two levels but not that high one there right let's leave this on and see what happens right okay i'm bored of waiting now that was about I don't know that was I'm sure at least five minutes maybe longer maybe six or seven so uh, yeah as far as I'm concerned that is now fixed whatever I did to fix it I do not know all I'm thinking is something to do with the hair or this could be just complete like coincidence and now later on he might be used again over the next week and it might go faulty again but at this moment in time it's not faulty so I'm not going to waste any more time on it uh, yeah do you know, I was just looking in there and I'm just thinking like, this is a very short hair dryer. Let's say now my daughter's got long hair and let's say if she comes out of the bath sopping wet, if some hair was to go in that side, yes, I know it would burn because of the coil and stuff, but like, there's 240 volts, isn't there, going through that diode there. I wonder whether it's possible to get a shock if wet hair was to go in there or not. I don't know how safe that is because normally, with uh, a normal size hair dryer, you know, you're going to have, uh, I presume that most of that's going to be coil until you get to here. So your hair would have to get in a long way before it would like touch anything that was 240 volts. But with a short one here, look, it's just an inch. It's just an inch below that bit there. Can you see? So, uh, yeah. if they're unsafe, would you uh, pop that down in the comments just to uh, let me know? I know obviously it's cheap quality and stuff, but it'd be just interesting to see whether it's unsafe or not. But uh, yeah, definitely didn't do that earlier and it's working now. Right, so let's uh, forget about that one. I can always revisit that at another stage. So now this is the other one here. And now I won't be able to show you the heat not working, but if you have a look, two settings do work for the speed. And then with the uh, with this one here, that's quite cold. That's really cold. That one. Now that's warm, but going to this one makes no difference. So between here and here, there's no difference whatsoever. So again, let's unplug it and let's see if we can see anything because I remember with this one. I think there was fluff or something inside it because part of the coil used to glow red. So when this is on and you look in it, normally it should be just dark. What used to happen was, I've unplugged it, what used to happen was there was part of the coil that used to be glowing red. So I'm wondering whether there was some kind of dust or something shorting against it. So I'm thinking that maybe part of the coil has burnt itself out. So let's take this apart again. It looks like you need a special one of these things here. Okay, so what do we have here now? All right, let's, uh, let's have a look. Obviously it's unplugged again. So again, it goes into one of these things. It says Carly on it. Anything on the other side? 0.1k 275 volt. Again, not sure whether that's uh, some sort of resistor. Maybe it's some sort of fancy resistor. Right, uh, so what's happening now? Let's get this right. The top one is the thing that's not working. So it's this one here. So I suppose, first of all, we need to work out whether the switch is actually doing anything or not, because it could be a faulty switch. So this is the switch here. So now let's see. So let's go to the middle one. Between here and here, we have a 1.15. Between here and here. No, it's the same, isn't it? Let's try these ones.
Well, we have got a different reading there now, haven't we? Look, so that's 12 ohms. But yet when it's on the top one, the highest setting, it's uh, 1 ohms. OK, let's just take that, that the switch is working fine. So let's go further into it now. So I've never gone more than this. I'm trying to work out what was wrong before. I can't really see what I did beforehand. Maybe I was into it further before. Maybe it was a problem with the coil before. I don't know. Definitely doesn't look like there's any solder joints down there that's been messed with. Oh, and I taped it because, look, I broke that one there. Look, can you see that? That one's intact. But this one's broken, so there was a chance of the top coming off. Right, OK, now look at this. Right, similar setup to the last one with the, the heat proof thing in there. You can see that this has had a lot more use. There's loads of dust on this bottom coil. Right, here we go. This is what is gone. Look, these are, uh, there you go. That's gone there completely. Look at that. That's just been burning, burning away there. Yeah, look, can you see it's all shorting together? So I presume the strings just to kind of give it some. What would the string be for? Would it be just to keep it taut to stop them kind of? falling into each other's path. So this is where it starts. So now how is this working at all? Or was it only working because before I messed with it this was just making a contact? Because look, this is where it starts. Let's have a look. What I'm thinking is, you know, to do with the heat, there has to be really one of the heat settings, well there's three heat settings, so maybe one only activates a couple of the coils, then another one activates a few more, and then the last one activates all of them. Now remember, they are working apart from the very last one. They might not be working now. Let's see if we can work out what's going on. So just give me a few minutes at looking through this, see if I can figure out what's what. Right, okay, yeah, I think... I think I think it's relatively straightforward. So uh, I don't know about the three circuits. I'm not quite sure how that works. But let's just talk about the fact that it's working on medium, but not on high. So at this moment in time, I don't think it would be working on anything because we actually have a break here. So all that needs to happen is wrap these two together, and then it will work again. But what I've done is I've completely unravelled this. There's actually two windings here. So one winding is this one here, which is this. Uh, purple yeah this purple wire coming up here and then basically it winds all the way round and it's broken here so this basically just keeps winding round here now the other winding which is nearly intact apart from this bit here goes down and that goes to here which is that kind of black color wire there so basically if we were to go on to uh, my continuity test if you have a look if we go on to the black wire here is that the one I'm working on yeah the black wire so the black wire is nearly good and if we go between here and here you can see that we do have continuity but not on this side here because we have a break here let me zoom in a bit more it's so basically this is where the break is yeah now what is quite interesting is so if we go on to the other one I now know that my meter only beeps, which I suppose is useful to know, when it is 50 ohms and below. So between, for example, 0 and 50 ohms. Because check this out. If I go between uh, this part here and here, you will see that it will beep, yeah? And if I go between here and here, it will beep. 
yeah, because we're at 30. But look, as I start to move along, can you see it's increasing? We're now up to 41, it's still beeping. But when I go all the way over to here, because it's like 50 something, can you see it's not beeping? But if we go just to here, is it there or a bit more? Hold on a second, it might be because it's uh, shortening shorten against each other. Yeah, so basically if it's, let's say 49 it will beep, if it's 51 it won't. Okay, so look at that, 47. 47. And now look, see it won't beep at 53, yeah? But you know, that is still, that is still a short. Well, it's not, it's not a short, is it? But look at that, you see? Nearly, nearly a short, yeah. So now, is there way? Is there a way off repairing this? See, I don't know. I could just wrap them round each other. The problem is, I don't know how safe that's going to be. And also, I don't know if I was to use something. I don't even know if I'd be able to solder this. But if I was to solder this, I don't actually know what temperature this gets up to. So I'm kind of apprehensive about doing anything about it, to be honest. Maybe just for the video, I might just kind of put these two together because you can see it's been burning away here. Obviously, I don't want to cause a fire over the sake of something which probably costs around 30 pounds. Maybe this one's a little bit more. This has lasted for years, to be fair. I'm wondering if I was just to intertwine these into each other, just for the purpose of the video, just to see if we could get two heat settings out of it, whether that would, uh, you know, just to prove the fault kind of thing. So you might actually be able to buy these windings, I'm not too sure. doesn't help because of the string. Right, I just want to see if that has given me continuity now or not on that. Yeah, it has, isn't it? Look, 60. So in theory now, that one would work. I think I am just going to just quickly bodge it up. But you know what? Unfortunately, this is going to be thrown away or might keep it as uh, keep it as spares or repair in case I need some of these components in the future, you see. But I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd feel happy using this in my house. Be interesting to see whether it could be soldered or not. Again, if you know the answer pop it down in the comments, but I think that this might reach temperatures that exceed the melting point of solder. It's quite nice how this all slots in together. I bet you can buy these coils, you know. I'm actually going to put this one on the next one down because I don't want this near that big uh, that big one bef uh, next to it. All right, let's see if that mess there has given me continuity. So we're on that purple wire there.
Yes, it has. Look, right the way to the top. So, please don't copy what I'm doing here because I've got a thing this is just going to burn out straight away. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it back together. I just want to see if there is a temperature difference now because, in theory, both of these circuits are now in contact. So let's see if I can recognise the, the difference between them. what happens to this now obviously it's not together properly there's only one screw holding it in the top bits broken so I promise you this will not be in use but I just want to purely just for the video see what's happening with it right okay right, that works so you're just gonna have to take my word for it whether it's going to actually heat up or not I'm just gonna give it a knock make sure there's no other broken bits of wire in there all right here goes Right, so the two fan settings definitely still work. Now let's see if the heat settings work. Right, yeah, I can already tell that's much hotter. Let me just see if there's anything burning on the inside. much better do you know what I want to see if there's a way that I can show you guys the temperature difference see if there I did have a multimeter that did come with a temperature probe let me see if I can dig that out right okay I found it so I've got this probe here and I'm on Fahrenheit at the moment on this you can change between Celsius and Fahrenheit I never liked using this multimeter but this is one good feature of it so now what I'm going to do is I'll tell you before because you probably won't be able to hear me shouting over it I'm just going to put it on the first setting so it's not as noisy and I'm going to put it on the first setting of heat then when I uh, put my thumbs up I'm going to put it onto the second setting of heat and you should see the probe jump up then I'm going to do it to the third setting of heat I have already tried it and it is working so watch this now this is going to be on the first one Right, so you can see there it's settled at around 82 degrees. So now let's put it to the second one. Right, and you can see that's settled at around about 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's go to the third setting. Right, okay, so that fluctuated quite a bit. You can see it went all the way up to whatever it was, 190 something, but it seemed to be happiest, seemed to be coming back to around 160. So there you go, that's proof that the three settings now are working. I wish I'd done it beforehand because then you would have seen that it wasn't doing it before. You just have to take my word for that. But you can see on the inside that those coils were completely burnt through. I'm wondering, I don't know how that happened. Maybe that's just how they fail, just like an electric. Uh, cooker element you know in, in, in your electric oven that's what happens it's just a big element or in your kettle it fails so maybe it's exactly the same here so maybe it had nothing to do with dust going across it or anything like that maybe they just burn out over time what I'm going to do now because it seems a shame because it is working and uh, I actually think look I don't want to know I, I don't I don't really want to say it because obviously if I, I don't want to say that and then people think that they can do that, obviously don't do that repair that I've seen there. But I'd be curious to see how long that would last. I'm wondering because I've kind of balled it all together, maybe that would get a lot hotter than other parts and that might actually start melting because if it's kind of used to uh, going through, you know, like relatively fine wire, and then it comes to a whole big mass of wire mat it together. I'm wondering whether that would create, well, would that be a cool spot? Because there's so much metal there. In fact, maybe that might be a cooler part of it. But then maybe the bits either side might get 
there might be more strain on the bits directly next to either side of that big mass of wire knotted together. I don't know. Anyway, look, it's not a good repair. It's not supposed to be like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to look online just to see if there's such a thing as a repair kit for a hairdryer to see whether you can buy the coils or not. Not that it would matter so much on this, but let's say if you had an expensive hairdryer, it might be quite interesting to see if, whether it would be an easy fix because that must be the weak point. That has to be the weak point on these hair dryers because that's the thing that's heating up and cooling down constantly. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna have a quick look online and then I'll tell you if I find anything. Right, so I've been looking online and there are some repair kits, but only for certain models of hair dryers. There's not like a universal kit that will fit all hair dryers. And I think the reason is because reading online, it does seem like they are actually pretty complicated. So we've got a motor in here, and a lot of people are saying that it can be like a 12 volt DC motor. Obviously we have 240 volts coming in. So what some people are saying is that uh, you have a bridge rectifier that will convert the, well, not even that. It, I think it goes around the element first, and I think the element can act as a resistor, and that will reduce the current, and then you will have a bridge rectifier to turn it from AC to DC, for the 12 volt motor. So by messing with the length of the coil or even messing with the windings as I have done, I'm pretty sure that's gonna change, well, messing with the length is definitely gonna change the resistance. By bundling it all up in one go, that's gonna change the resistance. So by shortening it, you could be reducing the current and you could be putting more voltage into the motor. In which case then, the motor might end up just uh, burning out. As well as that, when it comes to soldering and repairing these elements, I don't think it can be done. I don't think, I think they're made out of something, you know, pretty hardcore, some sort of tungsten, something or other, ni nickel chrome, nick, nicky chrome or something, not too sure. But anyway, like I thought earlier, they're gonna reach, I'm thinking, a lot higher temperatures than the melting point of solder. So by doing that, it probably would actually be very dangerous because then it could spit out that red hot solder. So I wasn't ever gonna put this into service. Please treat this purely as entertainment, just to see how it works. So for me now, I actually like doing that. I didn't like the first one very much because I didn't really do anything to it. I'm happy to use this because I haven't messed with it. All I've done was take the hairs out of it. So I feel that I can use this without any worries. But with this one here, I definitely won't be using this anymore. And I'm glad I've seen the inside of it now, just in case something was to happen. But I think what would have happened after a few more weeks of use, I think that second wire would have gone completely and I think then it wouldn't have worked at all or maybe, I don't even know how that first one was working because as far as I could see there was only two coils yet we do have one, two, three plus the coal setting. Coal setting I can kind of understand because the coal setting probably just cuts off the element completely and just lets the motor blow air through from here you know, through. So I understand that but I don't know how the third setting was done. It must be... I'm thinking one coil was that one there, another coil was the top one. And I'm thinking the first coil maybe was just one, the first set in here is just one coil, but maybe there's resistors and stuff that put even less current through it so it doesn't get as hot, possibly. I'm not too, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, I, I think that it would have given up the ghost completely because just by messing with it slightly there, you've seen that it was just basically dust in my hand. I mean, I've got to get the hoover out now because it's gone all around the room, but you can just see how brittle it's all become. So for me, it was interesting to see that there was two coils because I wasn't really sure how it worked. So uh, now I know. So doing it on one is uh, one. Maybe doing it on, maybe when you do it on the second one, do you know what it probably is actually? When you're doing it on one, one coil is energized and maybe there's some resistor, uh, possibly. When you do it on the second setting, one whole coil is energized, like fully. And then when you do it on the full setting, both coils are energized. That's what that's what I think's happening. But remember, I haven't got a clue. If you know how a hairdryer works, try to kind of like put it down into so many sentences and put it down in the comments below. And then, uh, then it will be helpful for everybody. Also, if you know if there's a way of, well, no, maybe I don't think there is a way of safely repairing it myself. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be putting this into service and please don't copy what I did here. I don't think it's worth messing, you know, messing with it because you don't want to, uh, an item which is so cheap, I don't think 
see, it's dangerous, isn't it? It's different if it's just something like a, a little, I don't know, a little, little handheld game in something or other. Apart from maybe having a lithium battery, nothing's really going to happen. Nothing's too bad is going to happen. But with this, you know, potentially something could fly out of here red hot. It could burn your hair. It could burn your face. Essentially, it could burn your house down, couldn't it, if you had it on too long and it went on fire or something like that. So I don't think it's worth messing with it. But still, it was interesting to see the break in the wire and to see, I don't fully understand how it works, but to kind of see how that's working there. Also, thinking back to this one, all those diodes and stuff, that must have been the bridge rectifier, because I think a bridge rectifier can work as four diodes, unless it was that very first thing there, but I don't think that was it, because I know the bridge rectifier on the PlayStation 4 power supply had four terminals on it, negative and positive for AC and negative and positive on DC, and that didn't. That looked like it just had the two terminals. So I think when you looked in the middle there and you had all those diodes in there, that must have been the bridge rectifier. So you must have had 240 volts going into that coil, and then that's reducing the current down. Stick the bridge rectifier on that to then reduce it down to possibly to make it into uh, DC and then power that motor possibly with maybe 12 or 20 volts or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed looking at the inside of that. And it just shows you, like, you know, boring household items like that can still be interesting on the inside. And I'm kind of pleased because. I got it to work even though this is going to be, I'm going to you know, remove the fuse from the plug, this is not going to be used again, but in fact I'm going to do that now because I know, I know I'm going to get comments about, uh, you know, that it's dangerous. So let's just remove the fuse from that plug and uh, obviously I will not be setting that or doing anything like that. But I am going to keep it because there might be some sort of spares or something there that I can use for something else further down the line. If another hairdryer went, maybe that little capacitor or whatever it is, that resistor, I don't even know, I didn't look at the, the markings on it, maybe I can use that for something. Again, if you know what that is, put it down into the comments below and then people can read it and we can all learn a little bit. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. If you got any enjoyment from it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.